Hello, today we are going to talk about the use of CT angiography and perfusion in the evaluation and treatment of acute ischemic stroke patients, addressing both standards and potential pitfalls. My name is Edward Sloan. I work with Fern, Fern.org. I'm Professor Emeritus at the Department of Emergency Medicine at the University of Illinois at Chicago in Chicago, Illinois. I also am Medical Director for New Rose Healthcare Management, helping the Emergency Department at Roseland Community Hospital in Chicago, a safety net hospital. And I serve as Medical Director for the Physician Assistant Studies Program at Dominican U University in River Forest, Illinois. This information is being pre presented at the Clinical Decision Making in Emergency Medicine meeting June of this year. I want to give my thanks to Joan Esbury Cullen, Andy Godwin, Andy Jagoda, Ginia Ports, and Scott Silvers, with whom I've worked at this good meeting for several years. I have no financial conflicts. I serve as the Fern President and Board Chair. Next, when considering multimodal CT testing, we need to consider the use of CT perfusion or CTP. What are the components of CT perfusion? What is this study? How is it performed? What does it demonstrate? The CT perfusion study does contrast sampling every two seconds for 60 seconds. It provides a four dimensional data set with three dimensions, three directions, and a time component. It provides perfusion maps which represent hemodynamic properties of the tissue at risk. Using a devolution algorithm, it, provided, it provides computed perfusion parameters. So what are the three parts of the CTP study? You see on the left, there's a non-contrast study. Then there are studies that include cerebral blood flow, CBF, cerebral blood volume, CBV, and then characteristics that talk about the rate at which blood flows through this area, both a time to peak and a mean transit time for this blood and contrast to move through the at-risk tissues. What's the purpose of these three components? It's to answer the question, is there an ischemic penumbra that can be salvaged by returning perfusion to the area by dissolving or removing the clot in an important vessel? Let's talk about these components. The first is cerebral blood volume, CBV. With CBV, you ask the question, how much of the brain volume is blood? And the question is, what's the volume fraction of tissue that is actually vascularized and includes blood? And typically, the CBV is 2 to 5%. And when considering a cutoff that would suggest a core infarct, we're really looking at comparisons in CBV from the affected side as compared to the normal side. What about cerebral blood flow? You ask the question, how much blood flows through the brain over time? And the question is, what is the blood flow amount per minute per 100 mils of tissue? Typically, cerebral blood flow is normalized or compared to a presumed normal reference region of the brain on the other side. And so CBF, or cerebral blood flow is, is, is expressed as a percentage. So if the CBF is 30%, for example, in an infarct-related region, then it is 70% less than in areas with normal blood flow. And a cerebral blood flow at less than 30% of normal does reliably suggest a core infarct tissue area. You see on this scan, the heavy blue area would suggest a large core infarct because cerebral blood flow is dramatically diminished related to the presence of the clot in a cerebral vascular area. What about mean transit time? Mean transit time talks about how fast is blood flowing through the brain tissue. In other words, what is the average time for flow from the arterioles to the venules through the tissue. This is your wash in to wash out time for the contrast. Last is time to peak. This talks about how quickly is blood flow maximized through the tissue that is at risk. 
And if you say, what is the time to peak flow into the arterial system so that oxygen can be carried to the at-risk tissue? And a time to peak of greater than six seconds suggests ischemic penumbral tissue, which is at risk and which will benefit from the, pre or the activities that resolve the clot and restore blood flow. Again, let's talk about the core infarct and the ischemic penumbra with regard to CT perfusion. What's the difference between the core infarct and the ischemic penumbra? The time to peak and the mean transit time, in other words, the rate at which blood flows through this at-risk tissue, is prolonged in both the core infarct and the ischemic penumbra. The difference is the core infarct has very low cerebral blood flow and very low cerebral blood volume. In other words, with these both being low and a long time to perfusion and occlusion that's present, there's no oxygen being deliverable, and this is non-salvageable tissue. In other words, when there's a low flow state and there's low blood volume in the area, it is likely now a core infarct. The difference with the ischemic penumbra is that the cerebral blood flow and the cerebral blood volume are partially maintained, often due to collaterals. And even though there is a long time to perfusion and the mismatch with the presence of adequate or nearly adequate blood flow and blood volume suggests that this ischemic penumbra may benefit if you can resolve the clot. In other words, this mismatch in the ischemic penumbra may be related in part to the clot, but also in part due to vasodilatation and too slow flow in the ischemic penumbra and not necessarily just from the clot itself. Hence, the possible viability of the ischemic penumbra. Courtesy of Chris Lewandowski, here are some pictures that demonstrate the difference between the core infarct and the ischemic penumbra. With the core infarct, the mean transit time and the time to peak are both increased, but this is true of both the infarct and the penumbra. But in the core infarct, you can see here on the right, cerebral blood flow in, blo in blue is much diminished and cerebral blood volume is much diminished. These are characteristics of the core infarct. The ischemic penumbra, which also has mean, um, mean transit time and time to peak, which are delayed or increased, you can see here with the red on the left-sided images, the cerebral blood flow and cerebral blood volume on the right actually are almost adequately or optimally maintained, suggesting that this is ischemic penumbra because there is currently adequate blood flow and blood volume, it is just not optimized and it needs to be optimized in the ischemic penumbra through some thrombolytic therapy or endovascular therapy. So the CT perfusion question is, how can cerebral blood volume and cerebral blood flow approach normal in the ischemic penumbra if there's a vascular lesion and mean transit time and time to perfusion are diminished. And the question is, how does oxygenated blood being delivered to the stroke ischemic penumbra tissue? The answer is, it is likely related to collaterals which influence these hemodynamic um, parameters. And as we stated, cerebral blood volume and cerebral blood flow relate not only to the flow in the occluded vessel of interest, but also due to collateral flow and the characteristics of those collateral vessels, which may be dilated and hence cause there to be a diminished time to per, uh, peak or mean transit time. What are the study technicals for the CT perfusion study? And what are the time and technical requirements for of performing a CTP study? The CTP does require 50 cc's of IV contrast. This would be in addition to the CTA. And it requires many views to be obtained in the same area over time. So you have the fourth dimension of the CTP. It is performed within seconds of contrast injection. It requires significant post-processing 
reformatting to be done. The time related to this post-processing testing may be relevant. That is, it might be long enough that there would be a delay in a CTP, even if the CTA results are present. It does require some comparisons between uh, packages that do this testing for the radiologist and the tech. And the interpretation by the radiologist does require some expertise and may optimally be done by a neuroradiologist. So regarding the software that allows this CTP to be technically determined, what are the issues regarding these softwares? There are multiple products. The perfusing processing is a non-standard domain, which means that different packages do the testing or calculations in a different way. There are substantial differences between packages. You can't compare one package to another easily. And so it is important that whatever package is utilized becomes an area of expertise for the neuroradiologist. What are the CTP indications? When is a CTP study indicated in acute ischemic stroke patients? Well, when standard therapies are not indicated, that is, when the stroke ictus occurs more than four, to, four and a half to six hours uh, before the time the patient is evaluated, you might consider a CTP to understand whether or not other therapies might be utilized. So, in patients with a long time from ictus to evaluation, and in patients with posterior circulation strokes, where there are some therapies that might be of benefit after six hours, a CTP should be considered. Outside of the IV thrombolytic therapy window, a low or changing NIH stroke scale, and in other words, a low severity stroke, when there's an uncertain ictus, as within wake-up strokes, when there's no apparent large vessel occlusion on CTA, CTP might be of benefit for demonstrating the presence of a large ischemic penumbra or when there's a severe deficit, especially with posterior stroke, and when utilizing research protocols that study the predictive value of CT perfusion. Thank you for your time and learning more about optimizing the care of patients who present to the emergency department with acute ischemic stroke. You can scan this QR code to find out more about our social media links, and you can send me a question to fern.org at gmail.com or edsloanmd at gmail.com. Once again, thank you for your participation in this Fern educational effort. Have a good day.